All right. Let's keep rolling. We've got another fucking 67 acts. They're all amazing. Let's bring on an next act. Smash them together. Smash them together. Ramp it up. Go crazy. Well, to stage, Lewis Garnham. Thanks, Bart. Give it up for Bart Freeband, everybody. How are you all? You well? I got here from Melbourne today. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> been living in Melbourne the whole time throughout this COVID thing. My city's been more fucked than yours the entire time. And now as soon as yours is worse, I came here. <laughs> I regret it. Anyway, um, whatever. I'm deaf in my left ear. I'll tell you this little piece of information about me. I'm completely deaf in this ear. I've been deaf in this ear since I was eight years old. It's a really good thing. A lot of people, when you tell them you're deaf in one ear, they're like, oh, no, that must be shit. It's not. It's the best. It's way better. Like, I reckon there's a serious flaw with double ears. I think... <laughs> I don't think that's the right setup because I've got a superpower now. I got I got a mute button. I can choose what I want to hear in life with so much more ease than everyone else. Imagine that. I'm sleeping, someone's snoring next to me, I can roll onto my good ear, blissful silence. How good's that? <laughs> Roadworks on the street, no worries. Kick ons back at my house. Have more people around. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm on this ear. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> that works for anything. That works for any amount of shit that you don't want to hear in life. You could be at a party. Someone starts telling you what star sign they are. <laughs> you can lean up against a wall. Oh, Sagittarius, do go on. That's cool. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> dream stories as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, a few dream storytellers in tonight. This is actually directed at you. You should listen extra hard to this. If you're someone who tells people your dream stories, fucking stop it. We hate it so much. <laughs> For the rest of us, the worst sentence in the English language is, guess what happened in my dream last night? <laughs> it fills us all with dread. Shut the fuck up. We don't care. <laughs> I think, I have a theory. I have a theory. I reckon skydiving stories are the only stories as bad as dream stories, as boring. Like, if you've been skydiving, well done. I'm sure it was very exciting, very exhilarating. But we don't care because... We all know a few people that have been skydiving, right? We know five or six people. So we've heard that story five or six times. And that story is the exact same every time you hear it. Has to be, because there's all these safety procedures. They have to be strictly followed. There's no room for any difference within the skydiving. We all know the skydiving story. Oh, we got there. The plane was flying up. <laughs> As the plane was levelling out, I did have a moment where I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Can I do this? Like, I thought I could, but now that I'm here, I don't know. I don't know if I can anymore. But the instructor, John, he was great. He said, Jess, you've got this, babe. You can do this. He grabbed me. We just jumped out. He didn't even give me a chance to protest. He was just like, we're doing it. All of a sudden, you're falling, and that feeling is wild. Let me tell you that. Oh, my God. It's so hard to describe it because you've never done it. It's just so hard to tell it back. But what it's like, it's like, you know in your logical brain, I've got a parachute, I'm going to be okay. But there is another part of your brain that's like, holy shit, I could die. I wish you had. <laughs> then you'd, your story would be quite interesting then, wouldn't it? Like, I feel like a skydiving story can only be interesting if something goes wrong. That's the only way it can differ from all the others. If you're not in a wheelchair, shut the fuck up about skydiving. <laughs> Ironically, the only people with good skydiving stories can't talk anymore. That's sad, isn't it? Probably the whole reason they went for the story and now... <laughs> It's a catch-22, isn't it? Have a successful skydiving trip, shit story. Unsuccessful one, great story, spinal paralysis. That's sad, isn't it? All right, fair enough. That, that's, that goes great in Melbourne. I don't know why you guys are so stressed about that. Relax. They weren't born with it. They jumped out of a plane. Fuck them. We can laugh at that. That's all good. That's fine. I'll tell you this. This is the only bad thing about being deaf in one ear. When I was 10 years old... I got an iPod for my birthday. I didn't realise at the time that headphones don't distribute equal parts of the song in each headphone. I thought it was the same bit, 50% amplification, 50%. It's different parts. This one's got the bass, this one's got the treble, different instruments, different lyrics come through on each. I was just walking around listening to my iPod. I had no idea. Honestly, for the first 10 years of me hearing it, I only heard the high parts in Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> And everyone's like, yeah, it's the greatest song of all time. I'm like, yeah, but there's a lot of gaps. Like, <laughs> Galileo, put something after that, surely. <laughs> I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. I never even knew that he was from a poor family. <laughs> just ask your family for some cash, Fred. 
Enjoy the rest of your night, guys. Hey, I'm doing a show at the Enmore Theatre. Uh, uh, not in the actual theatre. That would be ludicrous. <laughs> in like a small little room there. Come to it. It's on for the next <laughs> eight, the next four nights. My name's Lewis Garnham. Enjoy the rest of your night. Have a good Lewis Garnham, everybody. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs>